So we are super excited about what we're doing this week. We are going to finally finish with our off-grid electrical setup. And of course, we're ending it with the scariest and most complicated piece, in my opinion anyway, which is the AC power. And the reason we're doing this is because we've got a big fun announcement coming up later next week we are going on our first well i guess second official camp out in the rv it's our second attempt at camping but our first successful trip hopefully yeah i mean hopefully that's, if i didn't just jinx it yeah that's still <laughs> up in the air but if you've been following along you know that we tried to do this a uh, week or two ago the bus broke down, so we're trying it again. Next week, we're, we booked a campsite for five days. So our big goal for this week is to install the inverter and breaker boxes so that we can have AC power in the bus. I think this is the most intimidating part of our off-grid electrical setup so far. We've installed solar panels and we have our DC up and working, which is powering these lights. And this is just the final piece of the puzzle. If we can get this done quickly, we can enjoy it next week while we're camping. So it's nice to have a little extra motivator to keep us from getting too paralyzed at making any mistakes. That's really our big motivation here is if we get this done, we get to bring a microwave to our camp out. <laughs> How extra is that? <laughs> So behind me is our 3000 watt Ranergy inverter charger. We've had this beast sitting in our workshop for the last couple weeks, uh, just waiting for the right time to install it. Yeah, we've been, uh, this is our third mat we bought. We've been putting these inside the dinette seats. So we bought another one for the inverter to sit on. We just uh, wanted some type of sheet covering to go back here so that all our supplies aren't sitting directly on the plywood floor. We're installing the first of two breaker boxes. So Jimmy's working on screwing that into the back of the dinette right now. We're gonna take a break from trying to install the inverter and the breakers because we're waiting on some wires to come in that we need before we can figure out exactly where the inverter is gonna go. In the meantime, we're gonna start working on installing some AC outlets. So we have all the lines run, we just have to put in the boxes and then the outlet faces and we should be good to go with that. I think it's gonna be pretty easy. On a scale of one to 10, how hard is that? Um, like a 12. <laughs> like, I feel like I'm trying to be a human jigsaw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really hard. <laughs> You're doing good, it looks good now. Thank you. Yeah, it looks really crooked, but um, that's okay. I feel like we can straighten it out because I'm making it a little bit smaller so we can sand it down so it doesn't look awful. It's out! We want to make sure that this is relatively safe and I think the most dangerous part of this whole setup right now is the fact that we have an open fuse for our positive line connected to our batteries. Just in general, we kind of want to keep that isolated, don't want any metal to touch it or any person to touch it. So just as an extra precaution, we're building a little wooden panel in front of it. There is supposed to be a plastic fuse cover that comes with it, but it doesn't fit with the size of cable that we had to put on there. So this is just the next best option for us. We're trying to kind of recreate the fuse cover with like a wood panel. So just to kind of briefly go through what we have in our off-grid electrical setup, we have 600 watts of solar panels on the roof that we've already installed. There's six separate 100 watt panels. We have those connected to 300 amp hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries. And those are connected through our 60 amp MPPT solar charge controller. And for our AC power, we have a 3000 watt inverter and a 30 amp plug for a shore power. With our research, I think that'll work for our needs. We are gonna have a microwave 
in our build, which is a pretty big power draw. We're not gonna have an air conditioning unit or anything else that's super power intensive that I know of, but it seems to be working well so far. All we have hooked up to it is the DC, so we're charging our phones out of some USB outlets. We also have our puck lights installed and going almost all the time, and we have two max air fans that will run whenever we're out here. And so far, our setup is able to very easily handle that, even with just partial shade throughout the day. Once we have AC, that'll be the real game changer though. I have got most of the cables hooked up. I just put in my first breaker and it went pretty well. We do need to run to Lowe's and get some more uh, 10 to cable because I ran out so I can't actually connect the shore power with the inverter anymore. So we gotta run back get some more and we should be able to hook everything up. Natalie is working hard at installing this outlet on our dinette seat. We want, we wanted one kind of at the bottom and um, we don't really we don't really have the space for it and we don't want to mess up the paint so we're not using the, the jigsaw. So we're using like a handheld saw and it is going very slowly. You good over there Nat? Yeah, it's coming along. I'm so close but I've been saying that for like 15 minutes now. I finally got it. Yay. <laughs> oh, he's the camera. He could, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> That's cute, though. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> See, Jimmy's excited, too. <laughs> thought you were talking to me. I just walked in. Oh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I finally got it in, and it's level with the top of the dinette bench. There are a couple small imperfections, but because we did it this way, we didn't chip the paint, which is really nice, and the outlet cover should hide any of the irregularities around the side. This is the AC line that goes to the dinette outlet, which I have been painstakingly installing all day. It took me a really long time and it does not look perfect. So I already have one of our four outlets hooked up. She just made the connection for the second one, so I've got to run the line through here and then we'll connect it and attach a breaker there. Easy peasy. So one of the things I was most concerned about was how to connect the ground of this inverter to the ground of our bus. Um, so earlier we basically created this ground terminal that connects to the chassis of our bus here and the inverter has a little nub inside this white panel for a very small ground connection. But they don't leave any holes for you to run a third wire through so I can't connect to it. So what I did do was I shaved off some of the paint on the side and I connected another 4 gauge cable through that screw hole that I made basically that connects to the unpainted metal of the frame of the inverter. And what we can do now is test for a ground connection. So what I'm doing now is uh, I'm using the multimeter to check for connections. I've got one on the ground node that I know should be connected to ground in the inverter. And then the other one I'm connecting to the ground of my bus. And then I can see clearly that I'm getting um, a reading through my multimeter showing that there is a circuit between these two. As far as I know, we've been able to connect the ground and we should have a safe connection once we turn the inverter on. maybe we're being a little bit dramatic but it's better to be safe than sorry we're about to flip on the inverter for the first time since we've connected it and Jimmy has gone to get a fire extinguisher just to have on hand in case anything goes wrong when we connected the inverter to the positive bus bar we expected it which helped a lot but there was a spark which I think is really normal this is kind of scary stuff because it's pretty High voltage, it's certainly a lot more than the DC, which is only 12 volts, because this is 120. So we're just being really careful the whole time, and we don't have any experience with any of this, so please, you know, don't just go off of what we're doing for yourself. Like, it takes a lot of research, and a lot of risk is involved with doing it yourself, so, you know, consider it really carefully, because we are not professionals with any of this. Output 119 volts. Oh! Ooh, yay! All right, I think we're good. So the outlet on the dinette is kind of different from the other ones in the bus because it, it's really hard to see because it's all black. 
but it has a USB and a USB-C connection. I don't know if it came across in the shots earlier, but uh, yeah, that was a pretty scary process. Like, it was the first time we ever hooked up um, AC inverter nonsense before. So, uh, you know, I'm always like paranoid that I'm just connecting two wires, you know, wrong and everything's gonna blow up. So we brought out the a fire extinguisher just in case, and luckily we, we didn't use it. So we get our reward now, right, Natalie? Yeah. Um, and what's our reward? We have AC power. Yeah. We said it at the beginning. Oh, we can uh, use shore power on our camping trip next week. Oh, well, yeah, that too. But no, we would bring in our microwave. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can have a microwave on a camping trip. All right, let's go get our microwave. I want to plug it in. I think that officially will make it glamping, right? I think so. A microwave I, makes it glamping. Yeah, <laughs> if that's any, yeah, that's the definition of glamping is whether or not you have a microwave. <laughs> right. <laughs> so now that the inverter is plugged in and on, we are going to try plugging in to shore power and connect to a house outlet because we bought an adapter so that we can plug in our 30 amp plug to a house outlet. Hundred nineteen in. That's super cool. Let's put this in its home. <laughs> it's time. I really hope we measured correctly for this. I really hope so. <laughs> okay. Ah, that was good. Yeah, I'll take it. This is such a big first appliance to try. <laughs> like we skipped phone chargers, computer chargers. We're just going straight to a 900 watt microwave. Yeah. And we do have a 3000 watt inverter so that it should be able to handle this. I'm not worried about it. I mean, I am, but I'm not. Ooh. That's a good sound. It's singing. Oh, cute, it's lighting up. Oh. Hey. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at that, how cute. That's crazy. I can't wait to hear that sound every time we turn on and off the inverter. <laughs> yeah. I feel like when we have more appliances, we're just gonna hear a series of beeps yeah. because the inverter itself beeps too. <laughs> we have an off-grid microwave powered by the sun. So even when we're using the microwave, we're cooking food with the sun, which is super cool. Yeah, so that by that definition, is it officially not glamping now since we're still using the power of the sun? I think it's still glamping. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting pretty late. It's kind of nighttime right now, and we're just hanging out in the bus, and I want to try using our microwave to cook something. This is the very first time, and I think I picked the easiest thing I could think of. Wow, let's do it. There's nothing like hot tea when it's 80 degrees outside. <laughs> but it worked, I have tea, made in the microwave, powered by our solar panels, handled by our inverter. It's a pretty cool feeling, even though it does not fit with the season at all. <laughs> so it's a new day. It's almost evening we've been really busy and have not really picked up the camera but we have a couple of small updates for the ac setup and we can take you through what we've done it's a lot of things that have just kind of taken some time and there were also some research tasks and just getting ready for our trip so we haven't um, had much to show but we can show you the finished product so one of the really important things that we did for our AC setup is we installed a master switch to turn off our batteries, but we're gonna have to be really careful about using it because if we turn off the batteries while the solar panels are still feeding the charge controller, it can really mess things up. We're really not supposed to do that. So we ordered a switchable fuse and that's coming later this week to put in our solar panel line so that way we can switch off the solar panels and then we'll be able to safely turn off the batteries with the master switch so we have the battery master switch installed and we're still waiting on the switchable fuse for the solar panels but that's kind of a nice thing to have going forward so that we can do maintenance safely and it's just going to make things much simpler if we have to do any tweaks later so we've got all of our electrical stuff here that's underneath the dinette seat and that kind of spills out into this garage area and one thing we wanted to do is kind of protect the area down here 
So I built a box around it. I've been scratching my head all day of what, how to build a box around it while still making it accessible and trying to save as much space as possible so we don't waste storage space. So I came out with this like L seat looking shape. So basically, we should just be able to flip up the panels that are on hinges and still access everything underneath. And it should give us plenty of room to actually still like change around the wires and stuff if we need to do maintenance later on. Um, but this is what this panel looks like. And then I'm finalizing the last panel that'll go here that'll kind of flip up out of the way of this one. So we should be able to flip it up and mess with the breakers when we need to. Um, I don't really ever expect to open this thing. That's kind of the best case scenario. Good morning. It is officially two days out from our big camping trip and we have most of everything prepared. Today we're just going to be working on putting in the slats for our bed so we can bring the air mattress out here and then we got to do some food prep. We have slats! It's all ready for the air mattress to go on, except we do want to put up a wall against where the shower is going to be, where we're going to have like a cut off corner for the final mattress. Um, obviously we can't cut off the corner of our air mattress, so we're just going to put a wall here so that we don't hurt the wires that are going through this. <laughs> sweeping the bed. <laughs> yeah, don't mind me, I'm just sweeping my bed. <laughs> Our first uh, wall up. <laughs> <laughs> That's not permanent though. No, not at all. <laughs> cool, looking good. Looks cozy. Yeah, it's a lot cozier. It honestly is. <laughs> Bro, that's nice. <laughs> Gosh, I'm glad we're bringing this on the trip. <laughs> we are not using. <laughs> yes, we got it. It's an emergency fan. No. I don't know how many watts that is, but it has to be like more than it's worth. Oh, it's nice to lay down. We got work to do, Jimmy. Don't get too comfortable. Too late. <laughs> oh, I'm comfy and I'm staying. Uh-uh. I guess to be fair, um, I don't know if we've mentioned it yet, but this trip is to celebrate Jimmy's 25th birthday. So maybe I should do all the food prep and let him take a nap on the air mattress. That's right. This is what I was beelining for, just so <laughs> I can get a bed. So I can relax. Right. That's why you wanted to do this first. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, you better get to work then. <laughs> all right, well, I think we're going to um, spend some time and just finish packing up. And I guess we'll see you uh, next week after I'm 25. Yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.